<laughs> we are in a Daihatsu. This is, okay, this is Gran Turismo dreams coming true today. When I think of Gran Turismo 2, 3, and 4, what I think of is the, the Daihatsu Midget. And this is very closely related to that car, single seat K car. But here we go, this one's a little bit more practical. Uh, 10 kilometers an hour, already in second gear. This, this is authentic Japan right here. I can place myself anywhere I want in the lane. Okay, uh, yeah, this is Evan's car, imported from Japan by our friend Mike over at Fourth Right, Fourth right Trading. If you guys remember, I recently drove his Land Cruiser that he converted from a fire truck into a much more practical vehicle. Uh, and he imported this for Evan not too long ago. Uh, along with an R34 GTT, much like my car, but uh, a little bit nicer, cool authentic body kit, and an S15 Varietta, which is of course the Roadster version of the S15. So, Evan's got quite the stable of vehicles. I mean, this dashboard I'm looking at right here is like Evo 4. This is huge Evo 4 vibes going on right here. Is the, Okay, this is the big question. Is the steering wheel adjustable? I don't believe the steering wheel's adjustable. No. So it's very upright. And of course, K trucks have made a, I mean, they have really made like a resurgence. K trucks, of course, 660 cc's. Uh, this one is naturally aspirated, three cylinder, no tachometer. But of course, they're legal to import here in North America. And for you guys in the States, I, maybe this has begun to happen as well, but here in Canada, if you've got a landscaping company, if you if you run like a resort or something like that, and you don't want to use golf carts, this is what people are buying. This is what people are importing. And of course, one of the big things, one of the big positives that no one really thinks about when driving a right-hand drive vehicle is when you pull off on the side of the road, you can just get out. You're just on the curb, right? So it makes a lot of sense for things like that, for mail delivery uh, and you know hauling kegs around. The, the seats are relatively awful. The big thing though, is you've got a cab in the back. So what this means is if you don't perhaps make it to your destination, uh, that means you can sleep in the back. It's basically a miniature semi-truck in that sense. Now, I kind of compared it to some of the older, like early 90s pickup trucks, the size of the cab. I take it back, this is actually bigger. It's got a way bigger roof line. There's some vinyl, I mean, there's a shelf up here. It is very practical. What's going on, Evan? How's it going, buddy? Good, man. Why did you buy this? Because you, you already have two of the other dream cars, S15, R34. So I'm a bigger guy, both big and tall. So I wanted a K truck always as like a practical vehicle but I wanted an extended cab so I would fit guaranteed. So I've seen one of these, it was a black one, and um, I didn't even know they existed, factory. So it's a Daihatsu Hijet Super Jumbo. I've only seen three different ones. Did these ever come turbo? No. So they're only a 650cc, um, five speed or four speed. This is a five speed and also four wheel drive. Um, so it's like the Cadillac has AC, um, <laughs> like it's the pinnacle in the uh, K-truck world. Uh -huh. I didn't know that when I bought it, I just bought it because I love having a body kit on all my cars and um, I knew I was gonna fit so I could move the seat rails back if needed. Man. So I daily my R34 coupe. I could put my dog in it, but if any other stuff, I have a sub in the trunk. So it's like the worst vehicle to daily. I really wanted to keep another fun vehicle to switch to be a practical to go get shit to go to the dump i've done a few dump runs and stuff with it yeah. i had some big uh like 20 inch vip wheels in the back of it from my aristo i sold <laughs> we're gonna go from a standstill and see what zero to 60 is like or if it will make it to 60. 
That felt like red line. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Most full throttle time out of any vehicle I've ever driven. My foot is buried. No, we have not hit 60 yet. 60 miles an hour. We're still going. That's 90K. Foot's buried. We're in it. We're waiting 95 kilometers an hour. And there's 60 miles an hour. <laughs> I'll throw a timer up. This is, this is the slowest vehicle I've ever driven. Hands down. I did not think this, I mean, seems to be pretty obvious. I mean, so much noise for so little power. <laughs> people love it. And wind down windows. Believe it or not, you guys, I've met people who have never wound down a manual window before. I, like, I'm not old. I'm, I'm still in my 20s for a little bit longer. And I'm like, there's people on the planet Earth who have not wound down a window. It just it doesn't make any sense to me. Are these factory? No, and they are pretty hard to find um, to get the actual deep ones because I, I think there, there's some strictness around them. But um, it has some uh, little amenities in it. Got a nice VIP tray. Yeah. Nice wood grain wheel. I do have a little sub in the back. Yeah. Um, you can see the fitment's pretty. I, I have the biggest wheel I can get. Um, so I have a 14 inch watt knobby and I have to stagger the tire size. Yeah, so I, it's like a little straight pipe uh, motorcycle right now, so you get some nice down pops. Uh, do you know what body kit this is, or is this kind of a mystery right now? So it's a mystery. It, you look at like K-Trox with body kits, and there is there is like a cult little in Japan, um, but they're so rare. Like, I want to make molds so I can help other people get these, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's really any uh, in North America right now. But yeah, no, it's super practical. Oh, and the sides ones fold down too, right? Yeah. Oh, so they didn't really, they didn't have to change anything for the factory really then with this piece. No. They basically, they just had to extend and build. You can even see where they welded it there. But yeah, it's an actual factory body. Um, so it's not like an extended cab add-on by some random company. Uh, it's a Daihatsu model, the Super Jumbo. You just get to feel, you just get to feel the power band. I don't know, like trucks like this, cars like this that don't have tax and where you just have to rely on the, the engine, you really just have to feel the engine to shift. It just forces you to stay more connected than to the road itself and to the corners itself. And just to be more aware of what gear you're in, like in a dual clutch or an automatic car, or a car with a turbo that spools up at 2,000 RPM, you you really never, ever have to think about revs, even when you're driving fast uh, on a twisty road. You, you just never, you could be in any gear, which takes away most of the fun from the driving experience. And having a car with no tack just invites you to bang on the rev limiter occasionally. Uh, and hey, maybe a money shift your car, uh, and maybe it just, maybe it blows up. But that's, you know, we're, we're living in exciting times here. You need a little bit of an element of surprise to really enjoy this thing. You can easily fit in this Daihatsu. There's so much room. Not maybe necessarily width-wise, although, I mean, I would not want to crash this car. There is absolutely zero materials in the doors. It was funny, when I first hopped in it, I was really disappointed with how slow it was. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna engine swap it. Um, but the more I drove it, and the more I got to actually understand the motor, I like get to 100 pretty reasonably, like people aren't waiting behind me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's a blast to drive. What was it like? What was that first drive like? What did that feel like? <laughs> so it was funny. I actually had the same size rear tires on the front 
and the entire drive from port home it was smoking i had i went and bought a fire extinguisher because i was worried i was gonna catch on fire but i'm like uh i'd rather have the journey and something bad happen than just call a tow truck yeah and it's it's all about the enjoyment so i drove it home from port um with oversized tires on it just to get it home i ended up blowing the clutch on the coca-hala probably had to do with some of the aggressiveness of rubbing the entire time oh, yeah, but literally yeah. people were like waving at me telling me i was smoking <laughs> but yeah no it was uh if you need to run a 14 inch tire um i can give you the tire size but yeah it's uh you only can run one one size tire on a stock lift it's probably my favorite car out of the three to drive as a daily. Uh, so this is actually my Instagram I, and I can answer questions. I'm not a business or anything. I just like cool cars. Yeah. It, you would want to always have a second vehicle for long trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. But daily driving, it's great on gas. I put 94 in it. They're fun, they're practical. I really recommend people to grab one. Thanks bro, thanks for bringing nice. it out. Yeah, thanks for driving it. I, I want people to experience how good they are. So it's good that someone got to come see, I guess, uh, a rare Japanese gem. Authentic mid-engine motoring. <laughs> it's just a good runabout, you know? It's not something you're gonna be taking autocross, although that would be fun. That, that would be so, I mean, it would teach you a lot about yourself as a driver and how you can handle a vehicle that is not meant to do what this is doing. I mean, I love it. I think for the money, you can, they're so plentiful in Japan. People get rid of them like that. This thing has 86,000 kilometers on it. Uh, but it's just a unique set of vehicles that, I, I don't know, I think it's great that they're getting introduced into the North American market because the North American market is just one that's drowning in excess. And this is the opposite big bump of excess. What is this button on the dash? The, the one that looks like a diff lock. So that's four wheel drive. 